Hi, right, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're doing a video about uh, piston slap. So, um, where do I start? Right, so when you um, run an engine for quite a lot of miles, car, bike, it doesn't matter, but obviously we're sticking with bikes, um, what happens is, is that your horned and boss board cylinder is perfectly, <laughs> perfectly round, or it should be pretty much near damn it. And what happens over time is that your cylinder will egg shape. It will wear, um, and it will actually wear like this. It'll be worn more over one side, one side than the center. So if we pick the perfect center, it will wear one side more than the other generally. Um, that doesn't matter and you never really see this, but when you measure it, you'll see that if you measure, uh, just say your Y here and you measure your X, your X will be greater, uh, will be greater than your Y. Um, and you know, this is just ovaling or egg shaping or what have you. But why does this happen? And why does it only happen along one axis? The reason why is down to what we call piston slap. So what happens is, is that your piston, basically, because your um, rod, so we'll just say your bolts are in your rod and we're looking straight down, your small end, your big end, the bearings run through that, that's the rotational axis of the crank, your piston sits here, and it's this way and this way. In most engines um, with a crank that runs left to right, um, your piston your cylinders will, will your cylinders will oval um, front to back in a sense so uh, why does this happen so which way does our piston thrust um, due to each stroke you know which way does it bash into uh, the rear wall of the cylinder or does it bash into the front wall of the cylinder um, so the basically the way we can look at this is that we have a piston like so, with a wrist pin in it, and then we'll have a con rod, like so, with a big end in it like this, of our centre of our crank, Ooh. there we go, something like that, we'll, we'll just go with that, <laughs> and then obviously we have our rings and all this kind of rubbish. So what we need to do is we need to look at the forces involved, so we have the pressure from combustion, um, applying a, a big force this way obviously because we're on the power stroke and this pushes the piston down but if you actually look how this power is transferred how this not power force i shouldn't say power how this force is transferred it's transferred at an angle here through our con rod so we still can't see here really which way this piston should go it's not obvious so the other thing we need to do is we also have to look at all the other forces um, that are involved. So these are basically, the blue ones are what we call action forces. Uh, these are real forces, these are the pushing. And then we have what we call reaction forces or reactive forces, um, resistive, resistive forces. And these are kind of, in a sense, almost fictitious ones. Well, some of them are anyway, but a bit like centripetal and centrifugal and inertial forces and blah, blah, blah. But let's, let's not go there. So basically what we have to do is we have to look at um, all the forces that are resisting. So number one is we have our con rod. So why do we have an equal and opposite force here? When you compress that con rod, uh, it wants to push out in a sense like a spring. It resists it. Now, if it has very, very little resistive forces, we'll crush it. So obviously we're not crushing it. So there's quite a lot of resistive force there. We also have... Um, the uh, piston um, inertia so the piston has an inertia so it's resisting being accelerated and all the rest so what we have is we have um, when we map all this out we have a force acting on the piston which is quite large which is our pressure we have a the inertia of the piston resisting this which is quite small that's why we, you know, we move down. And then what we have is we have this component here where we have the angle of incidence of our con rod, like so. And then we have our con rod force, our reactive force there, like so. But 
there is one thing we're also missing, which is the fact that this entire crank pin is going this way. So our crank pin is going out like so. This is kinematics, that's just a motion like so. So if we go this way, if we go out this way, then our piston is going to go this way. And this is our side loading. So we have this component here and this component here, which is our side loading. So when we map all this out, we can see which way this is going to go. Every time the crank pin and the bottom end, you know, your big end and all this, you go one way, the piston goes the other. And this is, you know, this is quite easy to see. If you have something like this and you push it, ugh, that's not a good example, is it, Matt? If you have something like this and you push it at the bottom, then you can see what happens. Um, yes, this has got a pivot and a fulcrum and all this. But in a sense, so does this. Bloody phone. <laughs> So, yeah, you can see what happens with these forces is that every time your crank pin kicks out to just say the right, then your cylinder is slamming into, your piston is slamming into the cylinder wall on the left, so to speak. And it's the same the other way around. As soon as you spin around, you know, the other side of this, then as soon as you start your, just say your big end is here, and your conrod angle of incidence is going this way, then your, um, your crank pin has gone out this way, so your piston slams into the other wall. But that's why we kind of get this odd, um, uneven egg shape in where it's basically biased to one side, is because your power strokes, because your crankshaft always turns the same way, your power strokes are always, um, the, the, you know, the higher forces are involved with the power stroke. So you get more wear on your power strokes, kind of makes sense. You know, when your piston is on the way back up, um, when you do on your exhaust stroke and all the rest of it, it's actually the momentum of the crankshaft which is forcing that piston up. Um, so basically there isn't anything here at all, you know, the force is coming from the bottom instead and it's a lot lower, you know, obviously the momentum isn't powering your engine, it's actually just supping energy from it, from the system. Um, but you can see that we have this slapping, um, ah, that, that's why we call it piston slap. Now I will go into uh, how conrod length affects this, I will go into offset wrist pins, the Saxon cylinders, uh, asymmetric pistons and all the rest of it in a future video. I want to just kind of, so you can see the basics of this. If you look at this right now, there's fucking arrows everywhere. But, um, and obviously as well, there's also a reactive force uh, here of the cylinder wall resisting the piston slapping into it. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.